jump right in. Like, so. Yeah, it's a nice cozy group tonight, though. It feels feels great. Yeah, we haven't met everybody. I don't think. I don't think we met um, the, the Douglas, Douglas family. family. Mm -hmm. and, the Williams. Yeah, the Williams. Are you guys from Virginia? We are. Okay. In what part? Chesapeake. Chesapeake. Okay. Same right. Ah. And Douglas family, where are y'all from? Uh, we're from Texas. Okay. Just okay. about uh, Pio, Monahans, Pecos, Texas. No. You ever heard of Pecos, Texas? Never. No. We're about two and a half, three hours east of El Paso. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Live in Florida, we would want to live, or I would want to live in Texas. That would be my second place. We love Dallas. Not where I'm at. It's yeah, it's oil field country where I'm at. Yeah, it's desert. It sounds like it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, it's like 110, 115 degrees out here. So, oh snap! Oh my goodness. But there's no humidity. So it's that's dry heat, right? It's a dry <laughs> heat. I've yeah, before. yeah. And then Evans, where are you guys at? How y'all doing? Okay. Yeah, we're in northeastern Oklahoma. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So it's nice, comfy underneath a shade tree, but you get in the sun, it's a little bit warm. So what city would, would you be near? We would be the city's called Grove. So we're about we're about at uh 40, 50 minutes to the parkmans. We're just in uh we're just south of Joplin. Okay. We're on, there's a big lake on the northeastern corner. We're on the lake area. Okay, we lived in southeast Kansas for two years in yeah, like Galena or where at Independence. Independence, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so we're south. So you go to Bartonsville and take a right. Okay. Left. Awesome. You guys yeah. ever go to the Silver Dollar Steakhouse? Oh gosh, it's all about food. Oh, Silver Dollar Steakhouse. <laughs> no, when you said Silver Dollar, you're supposed to say city. city. Oh, is that what it's Silver Dollar City? Oh, okay. Uh, in Branson. Uh, there used to be a steakhouse out there that you'd buy one steak and they'd give you two. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I remember that place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, how it's not, yeah, it's it's about seven times removed. Yeah. This is not going to be about marriage tonight. This is going to be about, about food. food. Yeah. We're going to be talking. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> like food. Yeah, okay. We yeah. like food. Love yeah. it. Well, we're, we're actually really honored to kind of fill in for Greg and Julie uh, tonight. We um, think so highly of them, as you all do, and uh, love their hearts, love their generosity, uh, love their passion for marriage, and uh, love to be on this crazy journey that we're on with Married for a Purpose and um, and just uh, really humbled that they would ask us to kind of fill in for them tonight. And so just, I do find it interesting the uh, Parkmans are here and look at them. I know. They They're look like, like young whippersnappers. Yeah, Joy looks like she just got a beauty, <laughs> beauty nap or something, you know, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but a little bit about us, if, if we haven't met, um, James and Lisa, we live here in South Florida, West Palm Beach, and uh, we've been married uh, a little bit over 30 years and um, wow. married for actually 30 years, which is, you know, extraordinary for us. And we have three kids, uh, uh, two adult kids, and we're about ready to say goodbye to our youngest. She's about ready to move away to college. And so we're, um, we're so excited to be empty nesters. Yeah. We're yeah. it's it's going to be awesome, mm -hmm. and uh, but we're excited for her. But uh, we're both full time pastors uh, at a, a church here in South Florida, and uh, have been in ministry our whole married life. And so it gives a little unique dimension to our marriage. And uh, one of the things we do outside of marriage for a purpose and pastoring is we look after all the marriage initiatives for our church. And um, so we're, we love marriage. We love being married. And we love speaking. We definitely love being married, all the benefits of it. But um, so tonight, what we thought we would do is um, uh, we have a podcast that we do it on a weekly basis. And um, we did a teaching several, a couple, few months ago around a topic on conflict. And we thought we would kind of touch on that a little bit tonight. Um, so whether, you know, you're, you're probably going to find some commonality to the things that we've experienced in our marriage. And, um, so what we want to do is we want to actually talk about tension that happens in the marriage relationship and specifically three types of tension 
that uh, we've discovered in our relationship that we think are is um, is typical in in every marriage. So to kind of set up this conversation, we have to kind of go back a little bit to tell you a little bit of story of how we came to the discovery of this in our marriage. And so I'll let Lisa start, then I'll tell you the truth. So, oh, no. yeah, there, there's, <laughs> now there's going to be tension now. Um, so it's interesting, you know, you, we were just with a young couple the other day and we we're saying we're 30 years married and we, we still have conflict. We still have tension. We honor each other through that, but you know, we're, we're a work in progress. So this whole, this whole idea, what we're going to talk about tonight, like James said, has come out of a recent tension that we discovered with ourselves, which is always fun to be self-deprecating to let you know, you know what? Yeah. It's real. This, the struggle is real. So we have, um, so I'm going to set up a little bit of story here. We have at our, at our church, um, as employees, we have a staff meeting every week, every Wednesday. And we come to that staff meeting. We usually tell a good, people tell good reports because it's like great to hear what God's doing in people's lives. And it's like, this is why we do what we do. And it's honestly one of the most life-giving things about our week is to come to staff meeting and hear these um, amazing stories. So we, this was in February, we had just had um, church conference and I, it's all, always a privilege to actually have a story too. So, and you, it was, so I was so excited because I had a story. Yeah. So I was sitting there, I was prepared to tell this story. I was second in line to tell my good report. I had my photo with my people and I was, that was going to show it. I had turned it in. And I, so um, at conference, we have people who come from all over the country to come to this. And I had interacted with a person and I was eager to tell her story. The person right before me got up, was saying, hey, I invited this local girl to conference and two years ago, and God's been doing this great thing. And he shows a picture and she had a really unique name. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is my same person I'm about to do a good report on. So I'm sitting there thinking about this. Well, I realized what I had been processing with her um, for two years of conference was a very sensitive story about her marriage. And I realized, oh my goodness, she is, I'm sitting there going, she, she's from this area. I don't know if I can tell the story. So I lean over to James. He does, obviously he can't read minds. Can you read minds? No, I can't. Okay, obviously can't I can't. No, he can't read minds. So I whisper to him, I, this is, this is the same story. This is the same girl I'm going to just share about. So immediately I'm like, um, that's crazy. Like I'm, I'm trying to process in my mind, like how Lisa has connected the dots that these two people are the same. So in my mind, I'm just like, that's crazy. I'm trying to process and how she made this connection. So I quietly lean over to her and that where there's hundreds of people around us and staff and there's stuff going on stage. And I, and I start asking her questions to try to figure out why she knows that this person is the same person. Again, there's all this chaos going on yeah. around us. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm telling, and the next thing we know, um, this tension erupts between us. Like you ever been in the place where you just look at each other and you know, it's like, oh crap. Like something is, is gonna, here. There are no words said. Tonight's not going to be a good night. You know, it's like, <laughs> It's bad. So nothing was really said between us, but we felt this tension and probably nobody around us would have known it, but we actually did feel it. Yeah. So he's asking me these questions. I have to get up and give this. So in my mind, I'm going, I see this God story, how God has connected this woman and her, because I was a part of her marriage story. Literally the year before she came to our marriage breakout, um, and said, said, I'd like to talk to you after. And I'm said, absolutely. She goes, I'm, when I leave this conference, I'm leaving my husband. And I wanted to know if you thought that was a good idea. And I said, well, we've just met. I'd love to hear a little bit more about this. So long story short, through great conversation and dialogue, fast forward to the next year, she shows up and she's like, here he is. And I'm like, who is this? And she goes, he's my husband. Thank you for investing in my life and speaking truth to me. We're staying together. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm so excited. So this is a story I was going to get up and tell, but I didn't want to tell it if she was local and embarrass her and breach confidentiality. So I'm like, goodness, do I lie in staff meeting in God's house? The picture is going to show. So as, so I come back and sat down and basically James and I had that 
we had this tension mounting between us and um, I felt like he was, his questions were peppering me of, he was fact checking me. So the impact, the way it hit me was, how do you know this? How would you know this? Who, who told you? And it was, and of course his face was not doing that <laughs> at all, but it felt like he was questioning, like, I need to help you, Lisa. You must have got this wrong. This isn't right. All his questions seemed like that was what he was saying. Yeah. So the next morning we wake up and we typically have this routine in the morning where we have coffee together and we, have, we didn't deal with the issue. We have a few minutes together and another situation happened and there was the same tension between us, but not around the same conversation, not the same different topic. subject, different topic, but the same type of tension that we felt with each other. And, um, quickly, you know, Lisa in, in wisdom, she stopped us. She said, Hey, we got to figure out why this tension is happening in our relationship. And yeah, well, interesting. He was very gracious to say, God gave me what I, it was my wisdom. What happened, what had happened was, happened was at staff meeting, after we had this tension, our pastor got up and said, Hey, I want everyone to take a moment pray to the Holy Spirit, just pray, you know, pray to God to say, Holy Spirit, what are you, what are you telling me right now? And so we just had this tension. And I was like, what I want you to tell James, <laughs> Holy Spirit is <laughs> tell him. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. So I was praying and God said, you need to set this right with James. And I heard him so clearly because I was like, you need to get to the bottom of this. So the next morning, what he was talking about, when he, um, we had that tension, that's what prompted me was the Holy Spirit had told me 24 hours ago that I needed to deal with it. And because I knew I didn't know how to bring it up because it was so weird that we're arguing over these silly things that when we had that argument that morning, during our, right after our quiet time, then other, I'm like, we need to deal with this. And so um, I want to be right with you. I don't want to, I don't want to feel this way. And really this is actually just silly because we're not even arguing over anything of any consequence. Right. So this is, um, so then, yeah. After, so after we got done talking, we we're going somewhere, hang yeah, with us. Stay with us. This is the story. <laughs> we made sure that we were good. Hey, we're on the same team. Um, part of my weekly routine is I, I, I'm an avid cyclist. So I usually go on my bike and a lot of times that's where God will download thoughts to me. And as I was riding that day, I had this thought uh, I guess this download, I think it was a Holy Spirit download about what was going on in our relationship that really is um, typical in so many married relationships. And there were three words that uh, that I felt like were downloaded to me when I came back to talk to Lisa that, um, that we were experienced in, in our relationship, three types of tension. And I think for any marriage, if you can identify these three types of, of tension, and, and name them, it can help you kind of walk through those times that, um, and avoid maybe some of the, the, the hurt or the pain that comes through conflict. Mm -hmm. So the three words are, um, I'll give them to you at the top. Yeah. Are, uh, situational, seasonal, and systemic tension, situational, seasonal, and systemic tension and we want to unpack all those things but mm -hmm. the truth is conflict's natural right 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 so we we come from the perspective that conflict isn't the absence of unity it's the opportunity for unity right um conflict is um an opportunity for us to step in and strengthen our marriage not be um divided or separated by it. um truly it's just simply it is a disagreement it's a, te a temporarily a temporary inability to see eye to eye for whatever reason. And so when we actually know that, that it's actually, it can be productive and it can actually strengthen marriage. We actually turn it on its head. Instead mm -hmm. of saying conflict has got us by the neck, we can say conflict is going to bring about this um, richness and intimacy and communication and understanding that all, that couldn't come by any other way by it, but positively looking at conflict. Yeah. So we're going to pack each one of these quickly. And then we want to give you three tools that you can use in any of these tensions to kind of avoid the, 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 the 
hard conflict that sometimes yeah. comes in marriage. So the um, first one is situational tensions. And they are what it is. There's a situation happens and tension arises. And a lot of times these can be, um, uh, you know, everything's fine. You're having a great day. And all of a sudden something happens and triggers a moment of tension between you. Many times it can be external things like uh, something they have no control over. Like one of the things that's always a situational tension for me is anytime anything happens with one of our cars, you know, if um, tension out the room. Oh, it just, <laughs> and it, and that external factor mm -hmm. um, messes with our internal piece of our relationship. And there's tension that arises there. Sometimes it can be a mistake from one spouse to the other. Maybe it's, you know, uh, overdrawing the checking account or, you know, running a favorite pair of uh, pants or shirt in the laundry or losing a piece of important mail. Those type of things are don't happen all the time, but they're a situation that uh, can sometimes result in uh, a flare up of, of tension. Yeah, that's a great example of you with the car. Now, one of the things that he does with the car, which I've been learning and modeling of things that are situational tensions for me, is that he, he would say, it's just a car and money grows on trees. Well, we know money doesn't grow on trees. Right. That's his way of trying to switch the atmosphere in his heart and spirit that it doesn't actually stink the whole day up because his mind is wrecked on car issues. When I say we have car issues, we have constant car issues. So there's lots of opportunity to practice that. So those situational things, again, external, yeah. internal, but that you're really out of your control. Do I have no control Random. for them? But to, to be able to identify that, hey, we're on the same team. We're for each other when a situation that's out of our control or something that is an accident or something that, um, you know, doesn't happen all the time happens. We just have to acknowledge that like, hey, life happens mm -hmm. at times and we're going to have some times when these things are arising and making sure that you identify as this isn't normal, but we're on the mm -hmm. same team. You know, we're for each other and we're we're pulling. We're actually together. in that moment, we're making a decision that it isn't going to affect our whole entire day. I think that in our younger years of marriage, those kinds of things would wreck our whole day and we couldn't get away from it. And um, we've had to learn. And those are different. We're using a car example, but I have about 10,000 of them, but I have to go. I'm not going to let this um, just sit. We can all feel that funk. And there's times that that's okay, but we're going, we're not going to allow this funk and this tension to set and marinate in our, in our spirit. Yeah. Right. So the second type of tension is a, a little bit harder and that's seasonal tension. And when we talk about seasonal tension, there are seasons in our marriage when things are out of kilter. Uh, we've all been there in different things. It could be the birth of a, a child and, you know, having young kids running around the house. It's a season. It's not going to last forever, but it, it messes with rhythms. It messes with the balance of your your relationship, yeah. the connectedness. Sometimes you have. It could be a health crisis in your um, in in your life. Maybe it's there's a sickness or a, you know something that's going on that it, it's a season that you're prayerfully by faith knowing it's going to come to an end. But maybe it's it's this time that's intense and it's there's a there's a start and an end to that season. You know, for us right now, our parents are both. Um, both sides are getting up in age. And so we're we're starting to realize that um, that's a season for us, that we're having to make decisions and spend time and get out of our rhythm of sometimes in our, in our marriage relationship to deal with family issues that um, for our parents, right? Right. So I just got back from Memphis and um, it was hotter than cuss there too. So it's pretty hot there. Uh, um, but nonetheless, to help take care of my mom, my mom is um, a single mom, raised four of us all by herself, financially, spiritually, educationally, emotionally, was the the person. And so now that she's 80, I obviously feel a bit of responsibility, um, as I should, to help care for my mom. But along with that comes a lot of um, emotional weight and financial responsibility that doesn't, it doesn't um, cause tension between James and I, but I, it is a seasonal tension that I'm going to be living in of going and helping and navigating that. Um, but I, it's actually takes away emotional energy from me. It takes away physical energy from me. I got home yesterday. I'm ready to go to bed as soon as I got in, because I'm just physically and emotionally tired. And this is going to be a season. Right. I actually don't know when the end of this is going to be because 
I want to be with her and she's got more life to live, but I don't know what it's going to end. So sometimes those seasonal tensions can actually, like you said, they have a beginning and an end, but we've had people on health journeys that they don't know when the end comes, that they're just living in this, this season. Yeah. So, yeah. I think one of the things that we found when we're uh, working with couples, even uh, last night, we were working with a couple and uh, they're in a, in a season and they had not identified, they, they hadn't identified the season that they're in. And so they're dealing with some conflict and challenges and tensions. And when we laid this out to them, it's like, hey, you need to know that that in this season, you have to do some things to counteract the tension that sometimes comes with the season. Mm -hmm. So when you're when your marriage rhythm, when your connectedness is you're feeling disconnected sometimes during those seasons, you actually have to be a lot more intentional to be connected. Mm -hmm. So, you know, looking at things like your intimacy and not just talking about your sexual intimacy, but how's your spiritual intimacy doing? Are you praying together? Maybe you have to be more intentional to pray together, to make sure that if, if you're random going to church together, that you're getting in worship together, you know, mm -hmm. how's your emotional uh, intimacy? Are you making sure you're having time to be face to face, eye to eye, to have conversation, relational intimacy, sometimes in seasons, it's easy to put dating aside and putting, you know, uh, having fun together aside. And so maybe it's just a, a new commitment during this season that we have to make sure that we're prioritizing relational time, just the, mm -hmm. the two of us together, physical intimacy. You know, sometimes it can be, um, you know, some people are a lot more um, physically inclined, you know, like Greg and Julie are great examples of this. Like if they were teaching this, <laughs> you know, like, you would be, you know, yeah. Chris and Tina, they, they, yeah. yeah. Lisa and I aren't that way. Yeah. yeah see, but we do increase it. And we these, do increase. Yes. Yeah. Um, because physical uh, touch is not either of our Thank love languages. Miss, sorry. <laughs> um, that's why we don't touch her. Um, but, but in seasons, in seasons of tension or mm -hmm. a season that we're in, we know that we have to be a lot more intentional with physical touch of, you know, holding hands and so forth so that we're staying more connected together. And so um, that's really important in the seasonal times of. Yeah, uh, that was just going to mention that. I think the, the areas that we're not so strong in, in our intimacy, whether it's spiritual praying together, physical touch isn't a strong suit of ours that in these seasons, especially right now with both of our sets of parents going through a lot, we have increased that and increasing fun and active, like let's go on a date we need like if we have if we can't get a weekly we're getting it this week because we need that time just to laugh have a good time together because it 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 brings us connected yeah us. And, and i don't want to fail to mention sexual intimacy mm -hmm. like sometimes in these seasons there could be so much tension or you're just tired or whatever that that sexual piece of our marriage which mm -hmm. is really important can uh wane as well so you have to be a lot more intentional and uh, maybe it's not as spontaneous as it was, you know, before, but you have to make time for those times. I think conversation, conversation, conversation what great. you need in these seasonal times, what is it that you need? Sometimes I need more talk time. Sometimes I need more touch. And then it could be, Hey, we need to be intentional about sexual intimacy. So, okay. So that's situational seasonal. And then the third one is the most diabolical and that's systemic tension. And I think this is, was the big aha for, for Lisa and I, because I came back in from my bike ride and I was rolling out these three tensions. I said, I think there's situational tensions, seasonal tensions, and systemic tensions. And I think what we're facing is these situational tensions. And Lisa said, nope, we have some systemic tension that we need to deal with in our relationship. This is 30 years of marriage. Mm -hmm. and I realized that those two instances that came within 24 hours of each other, I realized we've had those tensions before. We just never dealt with them. And so we would feel this spunk, but we didn't really know. And just like I didn't talk about it the night it happened, but the Holy Spirit told me as soon as, it, and he presented an option for me, <laughs> another situation where I was like, okay, well, yeah. this is the time. But I think the our systemic issue was what we actually figured out what it was. Yeah. So I want to show you this, this tool that we use a lot in coaching. I'm going to share my screen here and hopefully yes. this works now. Um, hopefully y'all can see this. Can y'all see this? Uh, this is a tool called know yourself, lead yourself. And this was kind of a big aha for us in this idea of um, situ uh, systemic tension. So um, a lot of times 
couples get on this crazy dance. There's an act, react, act, react, act, react. And so that's what ended up happening to us is that you almost, there was this underlying ten, um, feeling like if I said something, I could expect Lisa would respond a certain way. And I actually always did. Put us on this crazy dance, right? So the know yourself, lead yourself tool, and, and this is really powerful, is like one of the things that we really believe is that a better me is a better we. So the more aware I am of my tendencies, the things that I'm triggered with, the better we're going to be together. And the more I understand Lisa, the better we're going to be together. So the way this tool works is that basically at the bottom of the tool, you see the word tendencies. And then we all have tendencies. And their tendencies are, are really made up from our, our nature, things that are wired into us that we have no control over, and nurture the environments and the experiences that we have growing up and, and all of us have different experiences and environments we grew up in. Uh, Lisa's is totally different than mine, her family dynamics, uh, you know, parent structure, school she went to, uh, church, growing right. up in the South, I grew up in the Midwest, churches grew up, all those things um, are, speak into our tendencies. They're, 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 those things are, are um, affect our behavior. And so out of our tendencies to the up to the right, you'll see it says actions. And every action that we uh, have is related to a tendency that we have internally. Every action has a consequence. And the, the consequence can either be positive or negative. And then the consequence uh, determines a reality. And the reality is uh, not just um, your reality, but it's also how in, in the marriage relationship, how your spouse is experiencing you. So my tendencies are going to lead to my actions. My actions have consequences, either negative or positive, and th that's going to affect the dynamic of how Lisa, uh, how the reality of how she experiences mm -hmm. me. Now, in between tendencies and actions is the word patterns. And a lot of times what happens is we get in these well-worn grooves because we don't know our tendencies. Instead of acting intentionally, we act accidentally. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is this is the crazy dance is a lot of times uh, one spouse will trigger the other spouse, a tendency in the other spouse, and the, 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 um, the tendency will cause the spouse to react a certain way, which will have a negative consequence which becomes a reality, which then causes that person to use their tendency to yeah, you get in this sure. loop, right? Yeah. So it, the more I know about myself, the more I know my tendencies, the more intentional I can be on how I act. And so we, we learned this about ourselves and we realized that this was really what was going on in our systemic tension. Maybe you can explain yeah, it a little bit. Yeah. Nice. So um, we use the Enneagram as a, a tool that we... Uh, for personality. And so I'm, I'm a helper. I love helping people. Um, I'm intuitive about what people need, but I don't actually receive help very well. So very ironic. And so I, um, I, it's, it's related to my comp feeling need, the need to feel competent. And so when James was peppering me with questions, it impacted me. Like I needed help. Surely I didn't understand as fully as I could have understood because he's much more intelligent than I am. That is not what he was saying, but that's how it hit me because it felt like he needed to help me and he wanted to help me. And I do not receive help well. And I also have an issue with a, a, a lot of overwhelming external noises, which is the environment that I was in. So I have all these people talking, my head is processing, what am I going to say? And he's peppering me with questions. It's making me feel like I... I don't know what I'm doing again, wasn't the intent, but that his reality, because he actually, his personality is to challenge. He will challenge so many things to make things better, but um, that challenging spirit and personality coming against my, where I was, we realized that was the problem with all the scenarios that were all unrelated to each other was to dealing with me feeling like he wants to help me. And when I did not ask for help and, or he, it made me feel like I was incompetent. Right. And so she would, her, her, she would be triggered and she would act. 
not good. Let me tell how I act. Uh, yeah, you can it tell feels better if I tell how I acted that he doesn't have to say it out loud that I'm going to tell. I get condescending and I'm like, what I was saying was, and I didn't have to, that's my tone. Yeah. So it, it, it's that tone of like, give me a break. Would you, you know, it, it, it isn't cute. I mean, this is why the Holy spirit got me 30 minutes later about right. Lisa, you need to deal with, really. He said, you need to deal with yourself. So, so, so here's what happens to me when she does that internally as a justice is a big issue for me. And she's just treated me unjust. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like, I feel like you have, there's no reason that's just not right that you would treat me that way when I haven't done anything except wanting to help you. And you can see how we got on this cycle of the tension, our reality, what we saw in each other. And so we, we had to really come with some, some plans of like, okay, this happens on a regular basis because we have internal motivations, tendencies that some of them, you know, we, we know, but we have to do something about how we act on those tendencies. So we have we have three things that that we've kind of implemented into our marriage, three tools that we want to uh, just leave you with pretty quickly here, but um, uh, that we think could be, really be helpful. The first one is uh, an equation, and you may have heard this equation before. It's E plus R equals O. E plus R equals O. The E stands for event. The R stands for response. And the O equals the outcome. And here's the deal. When I'm triggered, an event happens. Car breaks down. Car breaks down. I have the opportunity to either respond or react. Reaction is accidental. Response is intentional. And so if I will pause after, if I just have in my mind, when, when I'm triggered, just to pause and ask myself internally, what do I want the outcome to be? And then I put the R, I respond in a way to, to help guide the outcome. Now, is it always going to be positive? No, but I can, I can help guide the outcome so that we don't start spiraling. And, and the same thing, if I if I say something, I ask Lisa some questions and she's feeling triggered that way, she can, she can pause and she can either react, you know, accidentally from her tendencies, or she can pause and she can act intentionally and respond and break the natural pattern mm -hmm. and control the outcome. So that's the first tool is E plus R equals, equals o. o. The second tool is this. It's a conditional clause. And um, a, a conditional clause is basically, if this, then that. And this is, this is basically making a predetermined, a predetermined decision on what you're going to do in that situation. So it, um, it would yeah. look like this. If this happens, then I will act this way. Right. So if James peppers me with questions like that, or I'm feeling like he's wanting to help and imposing himself, if that happens, then I will make sure my tone is going to be different with whatever I say. Because remember, I said my tone is uh -huh, uh -huh. that that thing is that I'm going to make sure even if it and he's going to give me grace, even if I'm like, do you mind if I have one moment to get my thoughts together? You know what? But I, I actually literally am changing my tone because my reaction was poor in my tone. Um, so I've, I've tried to pause and do that. So if I feel like I'm getting peppered, then I'm going to make sure that my tone is appropriate. Yeah. And then I, I need to make some predetermined decisions too. So if I'm seeing the environment and it's chaotic and so forth, and knowing I love my wife, I don't want to put her in a hard place. If I know the environment is that way, then I'm going to refrain from asking questions. Or if the TV's on and everybody's going on and I want to have a conversation that I want answers, if that's the case, then I'm going to turn off the TV or turn the volume before I try to, because I know that all that chaos can cause yes. that trigger. Right. So it's a, a conditional clause. It's just making the decision mm -hmm. beforehand on what you're, how you're going to act when the trigger happens. And then the third tool is yeah. one of our favorites. One of our favorite tools is two words, intent, I-N-T-E-N-T. -E and impact, I M 
P-A-C-T. So intent and impact, this is um, a tool that we use when we're trying to communicate with each other, um, something that is maybe hit me wrong in the wrong way, or if I want to apologize to James too, but I'll model it the first way is, I know James, you didn't intend um, to hurt my feelings when you said blah, 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 blah. But how it impacted me was you cut me off and I wasn't able to complete my thought. And so it made me feel this way. So, but I know that wasn't your intention. When I say, I, I know your intention wasn't to do that. We're saying, we believe the best. I believe the best in you that you're not out to hurt me. Right. You're not set, woke up this morning going, let me see if I can hurt Lisa today. So no, it was just like, I know your intention is good. But in that moment that impacted me this way. Now, right. sometimes James will notice by my facial because I have lots of facial expressions. Right. So I may I may say something like, hey, Lisa, let me back that up. I just I just realized that that question I asked you, that's impacting you totally different than my intention, than my than my intent. I'm, I'm not intending to question your competency or anything. I was just trying. So let me let me back it up and let me try that again. So it's it's really a. A, a, a mulligan, a do-over, let me back myself out of the corner. And those two words have been instrumental. In, so in our, in our original life. conversation that caused tension, if if he would have in that moment said, hey, I can tell that I'm hitting you in the wrong way. I'm not questioning you. I'm just so curious how God is working this whole God story out. And so I'm just so, I'm fascinated. I'm curious. That was just really actually what he was. He wasn't mm -hmm. questioning my competency. He was curious about how is this coming together? How would you know that? But it didn't hit me that way. In the yeah. same way. Oops, sorry. What the was same, that? That's my ring. Sorry. Oh, the same way. <laughs> I thought I was shot. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> um, the same way, um, Lisa, you could have said, hey, the way you're asking, I know that's not your intent, but the way you're asking that mm -hmm. makes me feel this way. And it just, those words Without are safe words it. to allow that when there's tension, um, even, even in seasonal tension, hey, um, I, I know that you're tired and so forth, but right now, like, I know your, your intent is not to make me feel like, like I'm not important, but right now it's, that's how it's impacting me. And so you can use those words, even in seasonal times to, mm -hmm. to bring the draw closer together and connection. Even when we're using those words, we know whether we do it right or not. Even if we don't get it right, we know our, 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 our goal is we want to be right with each other. So if we're using the words intent and impact and we're doing it all wrong, it doesn't matter. I just go, bless his heart. He's trying to get us right. And he knows that I'm, tr I'm trying to bring unity to us so that we're not living in a, in a funk. So. so situational, seasonal, and systemic tensions. And if you can identify what they are, you can actually deal with them situational right away so they don't, they don't um, com compound on top of each other. Mm -hmm and become kind of this underlying tension. If you can deal with what the trigger is right then, then you don't have to deal with the systemic piece later on. Mm -hmm. Seasonal, just realizing that, hey, there's gonna be times when our rhythm is gonna be off and we're gonna, there's gonna be times where we feel maybe not as connected as we want to. And we have to lean into each other more and um, really be more intentional, maybe than what we normally are with our intimacy. And then that there's systemic tensions in our relationship, it's you know, one of the best ways to deal with that is, is self-awareness mm -hmm. It's just growing awareness, whether that's a tool, like I know, uh, Dave and Joy, you guys use colors. Um, you know, there's Enneagram, Myers-Briggs, DISC, whatever those, whatever a tool like that is that you can gain awareness of mm -hmm. some of your tendencies and how you're wired, both nature and nurture is going to help you and your thing. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I don't know if there's some questions, some comments, some feedback, some thoughts. We'd love the examples hear. that you've yeah. Or we can all just go get ice cream. Chris, 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 hands up. Hey, I'm all about some ice cream. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for being so candid and uh, sharing your own experience. And just to let you know, you're not alone in that. Uh, Greg and Julie have many a time use the term train wreck in reference to Tina and I. <laughs> and so, uh, we don't even need to get into sharing our stories. Just trust we were there. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things that we like to, that we like to share uh, with our clients that is so awesome. So 
Um, who's ever who's ever gone to Home Depot or ladies wherever you like to shop and where you're out and you see a tool on the shelf and you know you don't have a need for that tool yet, but it's so cool. You just got to buy it. Right. Mm -hmm. And you bring it home and you put it on the shelf and say it's a, a kitchen utensil. You can't wait for a recipe to use it on. Right. If it's a new uh, power tool, I can't wait for a project to use this on. So what we like to say to our clients is, listen, these struggles, these challenges that you're having, we like to call them an opportunity for growth, right? And so I've got this new cool tool, E plus R equals O, know myself, leave myself. How cool is that? But guess what? If I never get an opportunity to use it, it just sits on the shelf. That's right? good. So in order to keep your positivity up, when you're going through these opportunities for growth, right? Look at it that way is, hey, I've got this new tool. And I'll just say this, when Tina and I started turning our marriage around, those tools got a lot of use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, it's just, and, and so thank you so much for that. Those tools are amazing. Your, uh, your, your sharing of, of uh, that situation is felt like of so everybody pointing at each other and themselves and we've been there done that and so yeah it's just an opportunity for growth and it's great to have those tools and we should not feel bad at all about using those tools god gave us those tools for a reason and we can actually be excited about when we get an opportunity to use them yeah right. love it and then I would add too one of the things, one, another tool that we use is just like you guys said, is like, I know you didn't mean to do that. Uh, and, but I, I always start with, I feel like it kind of backs him off a little bit. If, if I start it with, Hey, I know your heart and I know that you didn't mean to whatever. And it literally, you can see like physically him kind of just rest back because I let him know up front that I know your heart and I know you didn't mean to, and maybe it was me. Maybe I'm being a little sensitive today. But I love that tool. Thank right. you. When when she does that, that helps me to start in that know yourself, lead yourself tool. It helps me to start from just beyond the tendencies. Yeah. Rather than beginning from the tendencies, she's put me in the know yourself spot mm -hmm. and then it sets me up for success. I and what a great thing when you can do that for your partner. And, yeah, and I try to do that for her as well. You do, you do. That's great. You know, the, the, you're so right. I mean, most marriages, married couples don't have bad hearts. They have bad skills. Yes. Yeah. So if, you can, if you can get the right tools and the right skills, um, you know, the heart is, if you have goodwill towards one another, it's just having the right tools and the right skills to, to move forward. It's great stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple things. One is um, I love um, what you guys just taught. We've heard that on your podcast before. It was so good. Yeah. For, so any so anybody who hasn't heard their podcast, these guys are class act, top notch. Your podcast absolutely rocks. And this particular topic you guys spoke about. And I went home telling Joy all about it. it. If you didn't catch everything they were just talking about, you can go back and find their podcast because they did an excellent job teaching this skill. And uh, we teach similar stuff. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you're great. Um, yeah, and like Chris and Tina were saying too, you know, we teach a thing called the power of the pause because it's so hard. And you guys used that word a couple times when you were talking was pause because that seems to be the tool that helps us to get to the tool <laughs> shelf and figure out what tool we need because we're activated at the moment. And, and so that pause is so good. It's it's so powerful. And we always teach that the, the power of the pause is really going back to like Psalm 139, 23 and 24 of search my heart, oh God. So we're going to the tool, you know, place to get the tool for me, not for them, you know, because we want to sometimes go, you need this tool, you need to do this. Yeah. But um, I also, if I can, I just want to do a little shout out because we have like three of our couples on tonight, which I'm so proud of you guys. Yeah, uh, and rock on guys. Yeah, 
And then also just to, we have four, but one couldn't get on there. But then also I wanted to share with them that Dave, uh, that James and Lisa did our reboot and, <laughs> and they did an amazing job. And we had a systemic thing come up in our reboot and we still use the three P's. Just let me know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, these tools are everything. And <clears throat> what I find fascinating about using these tools and starting to understand your own tendencies it opens up the window to communicate about them. And what happens is we learn our partner and quite often we're aware of their tendencies before they are. And so we can start to shift our, what we call Tata's timing tone, uh, at attitude and approach. <clears throat> so timing, attitude, tone and approach. <clears throat> we can shift that full well knowing that it's gonna trigger if we don't. And when that doesn't work, just whip out the real tatas because that makes everything better. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how it all came about. But it is a marriage group. We can talk about it. <laughs> but, okay. but, but the point is, is as we learn ourselves, our spouses learn. Mm -hmm. Right. The reality is we set up those landmines, those tendencies around ourselves. They're just all a hedge of protection, is what they are. And our partners are not intentionally going in there and throwing themselves on the ground and rolling around on top of our landmines. They're really accidental. And so if we can have the idea and the compassion towards one another that nobody's diabolical, nobody woke up, like you said today, and boy, my job today is gonna to be ruining their life. Nobody does that. This is the one place where we really expect unconditional love so our hearts are all in the right place. We're just accidentally stepping on each other's landmines. Yeah. And so if we can learn where, why those landmines are there, we can actually deconstruct those landmines. And now they no longer exist. And we know each other so well that we know how to screw around things. And it's wonderful. You guys did a great job. Uh, love you guys. You guys are awesome. You're some of my favorite people on the face of the earth. You know, with the all the well, you know, everyone who's on this um, call tonight, you're not here by accident. Amen. You're here intentionally um, to grow in your marriage. And so we can all know that 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 no none of you, none of us on this call are waking up wanting to make each other miserable for the day. Right. Yeah, we're, we're here trying to learn how to. And the truth is, um, I love what you said, Chris, I mean, about growing, growing never stops. And if we think that we're 30 years married, 50 years married, 60 years married. We have great mentors in our life. They're 60 years married and they're always learning. And they're always talking about it and they have a rock solid marriage. And so um, I, I think that I love normalizing conflict or tensions yeah. because they are, that's just what they are. And so they're an opportunity for us to get closer. Well, if you go back to that tool, the know yourself, lead yourself to our show said this, the reason there's an infinity loop is because a school of self-learning never stops. Anytime that we feel like we've arrived in our marriage or our, our own personal life, then then we put a lid on ourselves. And so that it, it never stops. We're always learning our tendencies. We're always learning how to act, always learning, you know, how to adjust the reality that people mm -hmm. experience us and so forth. So it's really good. I love it. Any other questions there, thoughts? Chris really wants to go get ice cream. So yeah, it is summer. So it is summer. Yeah. Well, this has been so fantastic to be with y'all. We're excited to um just be with you. We're looking forward to this all day and um being with like-minded people and excited about being married and what God has put us together to do. And so just prayerful for each one of your marriages is that um this would just be an investment. Um, that would actually tool up your shelf that you can pull off right. some tools and, and use them. Yeah. So when you pray though. Yeah. I'd love to. Close us out. I'd love yeah. to. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for this time. Thank you for each person, each couple, um, our couple represented here tonight. God, I just pray um, whatever the um, prayer of their heart is that they're praying together for, or maybe that they're praying individually for their marriage, that um, that you would meet them there that they, they would know that they are heard and that they um, that you're with them. And God, I just pray blessing 
Um, I pray peace and just love and joy that would be um, just in each of these relationships that um, when we see conflict happen, that we would know that it is an opportunity to be more like you, Jesus, and to grow in unity and closer together with each other. So God, we love your design for marriage. We love what it's intended to do. And we want to live into the full purpose of that. So we just thank you for it. We thank you uh, for being a God who's so personal and so close to us as individuals and in our marriages. I just pray blessing on this evening. Uh, be with um, Greg and Julie as they're recovering. Just excited to hear from them of what how God used them in Africa and or the Parkmans that also win, just just a replenishment to, to set on them. And so just so honored that we get to be a part of such a cool um, ministry like this to encourage each other, a pro-marriage community um, meeting together just to um, reflect you and grow together. We love you, give you praise. In your name we pray this, amen. Amen, amen. Awesome, well, God bless you all. We're Thanks, gonna stay on. To the very bitter end. So if anyone wants to stay on and chat with us, we're going to be here, right yeah. here. Thank you. Hey, Bye. Good care. night. Bye. I, I have a question.